remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again for another week of eye-gouging, crotch-kicking, no-holds-barred political discussion right here on TruthFrequencyRadio.com, 90.7 FM in Denver, 97.3 FM in Eugene, Oregon. Glad to be back with you again across the country, around the world, wherever you may be listening to us. And actually, uh, this week, as we do from time to time, in addition to being on the radio, we've also brought the cameras down here to the intellectual dungeon on the outskirts of St. Louis, Missouri, the studio where we record this radio show every week. We've brought the uh, cameras down here uh, to videotape this uh, for YouTube. Well, not videotape. Who uses videotape anymore? To digitally record for video our first segment this week for YouTube because we want to get as much... Uh, as much visibility, I suppose, on the topic that we're going to discuss in this opening segment. I think it's very important. It's a disturbing trend that I've been seeing over the last few weeks in America and something that I think is working against those of us who are patriots and those of us who are trying to save this great nation much more than working for it. So I wanted to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a come to Jesus meeting, as it were, over this disturbing little trend. Talk about it, get it out in the open, and nip it in the butt as... Uh, as uh, Don Knotts used to say on the old Andy Griffith program. Well, what am I talking about? Well, I've been noticing something ever since Donald Trump effectively won the uh, Republican nomination. Uh, ever since Ted Cruz suspended his campaign and then John Kasich, who was in the race for whatever reason, I don't know, but he suspended his campaign too. And Trump is effectively the only guy left, thereby taking the nomination. Ever since that time, I've noticed a disturbing trend of all kinds of folks on ostensibly our side, the Republican side, the conservative side, making posts, writing articles, uh, giving interviews, etc., trashing Donald Trump left, right, and center. I mean, every time you turn around, you see another post, you see another interview about how Donald Trump is horrible, he's not what you think he is, we got to stop him, blah, 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 blah. Now, don't get me wrong. I have as many misgivings about Donald Trump as, as most anybody does. And also, I don't begrudge anybody during a primary process, leaving no stone unturned in order to stump for their candidate or fight against the candidates they don't like. That's what a pro primary process is. It's separating the wheat from the chaff. That sometimes is a very ugly endeavor. And you've got to be part of it. I get that. I got no problem with that. But the problem I have with it is that now the primary process is over. And from where I sit, there's nothing to be accomplished by continuing to trash Donald Trump and run his name through the mud. Now, a lot of these folks who are putting out these stories, be they the National Review people, be they the talking heads on cable television, or be they actually just folks like you and I that are posting on the internet and, and putting Facebook posts up and tweets and so forth, just people like you and me, that are complaining about Trump, whoever it is. So many of them say that they're doing so in the name of saving conservatism or in the name of conservatism to stand up for conservative values. Well, that's an admirable enough goal, of course, and, and you won't find anybody who's more hell-bent on backing conservative values than yours truly. But what I find curious about a lot of this is that so many of those same people who claim right now that they are continuing to trash Donald Trump because... They want to uh, prolong conservatism or in the name of conservatism. So many of those people during the primary did not get behind Ted Cruz. I mean, lest we forget, Ted Cruz was the real conservative candidate in the race. No doubt about it. And if you didn't like Trump, you had an alternative. His name was Ted Cruz. Now, I'm not saying this in terms of sour grapes. Ted Cruz has suspended his campaign. I was a big Ted Cruz supporter. But with him suspending his campaign, that means a little something to me. And so I say, all right, well, then bygones be bygones. Can I support Trump? I've told you on this show before, yes, I can. 
because of a lot of what he stood for in terms of illegal immigration and in terms of terrorism, in terms of, uh, in terms of strengthening our military around the world, in terms of standing up for the Second Amendment. He's taking very strong stances on those issues, and I figure, if nothing else, that is enough to put him ahead of a Hillary Clinton or a Bernie Sanders in my mind. I can get behind someone like that, even if he's not perfect. But in any event, so many of these folks who are trashing Trump now, they weren't behind Ted Cruz during the primary. Oh no, some of them were over here flirting with Marco Rubio, Mr. Amnesty. Some of them were over there talking to Jed freaking Bush as though he had any shot. A few of them were trying to get behind John Kasich, the poor man's Hillary Clinton. So don't be fooled by a lot of these folks who are now trying to act as though they're coming in as the, the man on the white horse to save us from Donald Trump, save conservatism from Donald Trump, save America from, from, from Donald Trump because they had no interest in doing it before. You had your most conservative candidate you didn't back him, so it makes me wonder what your motivations are for fighting Trump now. Bottom line is this. Whatever you might think of Donald Trump, and there's plenty of misgivings I have about him too. I mean, his stance on social issues over the years has not been the best. Some of the political positions he's taken in his past have been abysmal and horrible. No doubt about it. Can you trust him? No, I can't fully trust him, but I can't really fully trust any political candidate anyway, so that's kind of a wash. But at least right now, he's saying some of the right things on the key issues. And he's doing so at a time where really none of the remaining candidates are doing that. None of them are. And so in that sense, there's really not a planet on which Donald Trump, flawed as he is, is nevertheless a worse proposition for the White House than Hillary Clinton or, heaven forbid, Bernie freaking Sanders is. That world does not exist. Hillary Clinton's already told you what she thinks of guns, thinks of the Second Amendment. She was on uh, This Week with uh, George Steph Snuffleupagus, or Stephanopoulos, whatever his name is, talking about uh, guns, and, and she would not even admit that there's a constitutional right for Americans to bear arms. The most basic, I, one of the most basic ideas in her constitution, she wouldn't even admit that when Snuffleupagus or Stephanopoulos pressed her. He, she wouldn't do it. She's talked admiringly and glowingly about Australia's methods for uh, dealing with guns. You know, confiscation. Bernie Sanders has been no better. Donald Trump has at least gone out on a limb talking about national concealed carry. Will he go through with it? Who knows? But you know something? At least he's going that direction. Hillary's not going that direction. Bernie's not going that direction. Donald Trump has talked about strengthening our military. Now, I don't agree with Trump on the Iraq war. He says it was a mistake. I say it was necessary. We couldn't be further apart on that. But at least he knows we need to strengthen our military. When was the last time you heard Hillary Clinton talk about impressive and increased military strength around the world? You haven't. When was the last time you heard Bernie Sanders talk about impressive and increased military strength around the world? Again, you haven't. And then, of course, on the probably the, the most high-profile topic that Donald Trump has talked about, illegal immigration, building a wall, deporting the illegals. He's been very strong on that. Will he follow through? Who knows? But at least he's going that direction. We cannot say the other candidates are. Has Hillary Clinton ever talked about a wall in a positive sense? No. Has Hillary Clinton ever talked about deporting illegals? No. She needs the votes, and her party needs the votes. They'll never talk about that. Same thing with Bernie Sanders. So on three very key issues, you can at least say that Donald Trump has the right rhetoric. Whether he'll follow through or not, who knows, but we could say that about any candidate. And it's up to us, the voters, the, the, the citizens, to hold Trump's feet to the fire when he gets in office to make sure he follows through those things, just as it would be up to us with any presidential candidate, any nominee, anyone who wins the White House. If it was some, if it was Ted Cruz that won the nomination and he got into the White House, we would need to be just as on his tail to make sure he followed through with what we want. That's just part of the ballgame, no matter who the candidate is and who, no matter who wins the presidency. That's how it's supposed to work. We don't just elect someone and sit back 
and trust that they'll do what they promised. We'd be fools to do that, no matter who the candidate was. Now, some of you are out there listening to me and saying, what about Gary Johnson? What about Gary Johnson? Now's the time. Now's the time to get behind a libertarian. Oh, it's the best campaign ever to get behind Gary Johnson. I've heard it all. I've heard it all. Gary Johnson is not a better option for the White House than Donald Trump. I'm not even talking about whether or not Gary Johnson can win. He can't, but set that to the side. I've never, I've never gotten hung up on that. But in terms of would Gary Johnson make a better president than Donald Trump, at this point I have to say, heck no, and here is why. Gary Johnson is like a lot of other libertarians that I've run across in my life. They, generally speaking, are people that have a lot of good ideas in terms of taxation, a lot of good ideas in terms of domestic policy. They're more than a little shaky on social issues, but I can deal with that to a certain degree. But when it comes to foreign policy, the libertarians tend to go completely off the rails, and that's why I never end up supporting one. Gary Johnson, like many other libertarians, both uh, candidates and office holders and even just regular libertarians that I run into in daily life. Gary Johnson's like a lot of them in that he seems to think America can just withdraw from the rest of the world and suddenly it will be all peaceful. And we never have to go to war again unless we're attacked, but that probably won't happen. So, you know, it'll be uh, peace and love and unicorns and all that crap. You know, it's always amazed me that libertarians, for all that I admire about them, about their domestic policy, when it comes to foreign policy, when it comes to war, when it comes to the military, when it comes to defending ourselves as a nation, they're kind of like hippies that just don't like to pay taxes. I mean, there's not a lot of difference. And in fact, I saw something come up uh, last week, an interview or something with Gary Johnson where he had admitted to taking one of these uh, one of these little online polls that that say, hey, you match this candidate by a certain percent and that candidate by a certain percent. You've probably taken a few of them yourself. I know I have. Gary Johnson evidently took one of these and said, hey, I, got, I agree 73% with Bernie Sanders. What? Hey, I don't know how screwed up a poll can be, but if there's anything at all that indicates you agree with Bernie Sanders 73, 73% on anything, Dude, check yourself into a mental hospital or get the heck out of the country, all right? You're a clear and present danger to the rest of us. So no, I can't get behind Gary Johnson. And it's not because he's a third party candidate. Hey, 1992, I voted for Ross Perot. Why? Because I thought Ross Perot was the best option of the three available. So I have no problem voting for a third party candidate if it's the best option available, if it's the closest option to matching my political beliefs. But the point is, Gary Johnson is not the best option available. Donald Trump is the best option available this time around. And some of you just had your heads explode at me making that statement. Bottom line is this, we are where we are. We can sit here and talk about Ted Cruz and I, I think Ted Cruz is great. I think he'd make a great Supreme Court justice or I think even 2024, He'd make a great president and get him two terms then. I'm all for that. Let's get two terms of Trump and then two terms of Ted Cruz. Imagine that future, would you? <laughs> you liberals just lost your lunch, didn't you? So yeah, that's fine. I like Ted Cruz. I think he's a great man. But he's out. He's out of the race. So are the other candidates. Gary Johnson won't defend this country. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders not only will not defend this country, they will try to radically change it and make it something less than America, continuing, continuing down the path that Barack Obama shifted into high gear over these last eight years. Donald Trump is a flawed candidate, as every candidate is. But he's right on illegal immigration. He's right on the Second Amendment. He's right on strengthening our military. And in this environment, in this election, with this field of remaining candidates, that's enough. That's enough. Now, I know it sounds like I'm succumbing to the temptation of voting for the lesser of two or three or four evils. Maybe that's the case. 
But when you really think about it, aren't most elections that way? When you really think about it, don't we most often end up voting for a candidate that is flawed to a certain degree? I certainly have. You know, I voted for Mitt Romney last time, last time around. I voted for John McCain in 2008. I wasn't happy with either one of those candidates. And I will tell you right now that for the disagreements I have with Donald Trump, for as flawed as I think he is, I am still more comfortable voting for Donald Trump than I ever was voting for John McCain. And I'm more comfortable voting for Donald Trump than I ever was voting for Mitt Romney. Why? Because Romney and McCain didn't have the guts, did not have the cojones to go after illegal aliens. Because Romney and McCain would pay lip service to the Second Amendment, but wouldn't make it an integral part of their campaign. Because Romney and McCain, they talk a little bit about strengthening the military, but you never got the sense that they just wanted to go, go in and kick butt and take names against the Muslim terrorists. They wanted to defend ourselves, but they didn't want to do much more. Donald Trump, at the very least, has been far more of an alpha male politically than McCain and Romney ever were, and then most of the 17 candidates in this race were, with the exception of Ted Cruz. And it's time that America had an alpha dog, an alpha male, in the White House. It's long overdue. Donald Trump may not have been the best candidate of the 17 that were running, but he's darn sure the best candidate of the four that are left. And instead of trying to bash Donald Trump and, and tear him down, we instead need to realize the danger that exists on the other side with Hillary Clinton, with Bernie Sanders, both of which have a legion of supporters who are now committing violence in the streets at Trump rallies or in inner cities anytime there's a confrontation between a thug and a policeman and they come out of the woodwork to protest, which means setting buildings on fire and shooting people, funny way of protesting, but I guess that's where the Democratic Party is right now. And a party who backs Muslim terrorists and criticizes us for turning a jaundiced eye to them every time there's another terrorist attack in this country. Hey, UCLA, you, 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 UCLA the thing that just happened. Did y'all see that guy was a Muslim? Yeah, he was. Media didn't want you to know that, did they? But it's out there. At this time, we have an opposing party that is not fighting the Muslim terrorists, that is not fighting the urban thugs, that is not fighting those youth in the streets that are causing violence. We cannot let that party have another term. It's time to put the Democratic Party and modern liberalism on the guillotine of history and pull the rope.